welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. But what I do know is that I've lusted after this app for 13 years and I have finally got it. My mate did promise me as soon as he was done with the hat I could have it. He's done with that. So it's mine. Mine, 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 mine. The thing is though, I think you're watching this in black and white. So you're just going to have to stick around to find out A, exactly what this gorgeous look looks like in glorious Technicolor. But more importantly, what this amazing hat looks like in glorious Technicolor. Because this is the third and final part of the three-part collaboration with my gorgeous girl Anya, where my lipstick chooses my makeup. So, if you watched the previous two films, you know which lipstick I've got left. question is, will I be inspired by the name of the lipstick, the colour of the lipstick, or both? My friend, there is only one way to find out, and that's to sit there and watch the film. Enjoy. Hey lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Right, this is the third and indeed final instalment of My Lipstick Chooses My Makeup. Today I am using the final one of mine that I've got, which is Bury Me in Lipsticks. And the previous two, I've kind of gone a bit abstract. So for Mrs. Norris, I ended up doing a Hufflepuff inspired. And um, for Bikini Bottom, again, I did a whole loop through. But this time, I've got Berry Me in lipsticks. And I've got a palette called The Berries by Juvia's that my friend Kay sent me. Which looks like this and uh, for once I'm going to take inspiration from the colour of the lipstick and the name of the lipstick rather than just the name. Right, uh, this is still a teaching channel uh, that combined with my chronic pain means that I will probably be blending slower than most of you want me to. However, I'm going to be blending at a speed that even absolute beginners can keep up with. So if that's not fast enough for you, there's a speed widget up there. Feel free to use it. Right, um, I'm about to put in, and it's going to be very up close and personal, so don't scream. Um, I'm going to put in the segment now where I talk you through the difference between deep set and hooded eyes how to tell the difference and what the workarounds are and then after that it's time to put some colour onto my lids. Now um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%, and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's, it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily 
or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour? You don't have that trade off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush something like this or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hello, I am back. Um, I've got some more AliExpress brushes that I was trying out. These reminded me very much of the ones that I got from Blush Tribe. They're not quite as soft as the ones that I got from Blush Tribe, but I liked the feel of the handles when I was using them, and they're quite a light where they're this sort of crystal handle, they're quite a light brush to use um, which when you've got fibro that kind of stuff's important. Right, these aren't named so I'm going to call them shades 1 through 6 and I'm starting I might actually start with one of the darker ones. I think I might start with this one here. Right, so Anya. 
who doesn't already know Anya? Um, I've collabed with her a lot of times. This has got quite a bit of kick up, as you can see. But I just tap off, leave the kick up in the pan, pick it up next time round. I'd much rather do that and have to keep building up and building up than suddenly get a splodge of it that won't blend out. Again, I'm holding the brush right at the very end, and as always, light circular movements in this direction towards the nose, and this direction away from the nose. Right, that being said, let me chat to you about Anya. So, I've known Anya for a good while now. Um, I'd followed her for quite a bit, she commented on quite a few of my films in the early days um, and then asked me if I would like to uh, collab with her. Yes, I've just got massive fallout because I didn't tap off properly. But thankfully I'm doing my foundation afterwards anyway. But if you're using one of these, tap off well. And she asked me if I'd like to collab with her and I was like, oh my goodness, yes please. She is, she is what the beauty community should be and what the smaller beauty community still is. Um, she's very, very giving of her time, of her knowledge. Um, it doesn't matter how many subscribers you've got, if she likes your personality, she'll collab with you. Simple as that. If she thinks you're a nice person, she'll collab with you. Um, and there's, there's so many larger channels that, that won't do that. They forget that they were once very, very small channels themselves and they had a leg up at some point but they all tend to forget that and um, don't seem to want to help others once they're in a position that they can help but Anya is absolutely not like that at all she is the collab queen, she did so many collabs last year I lost count um, you know she'll collab with you if you've got three or three million so long as you're a nice person. Um, and she's always got something positive to say. A couple of times I've sent her a picture of a look that I've done going, oh, I don't know about this, you know. And she's always got something positive to say about it. Um, and I love that. I love her... her whole attitude, the way that she supports other people in the community, both bigger and smaller than herself, you know? She's just... She's just a genuinely nice person. And unfortunately, those are few and far between in the beauty community nowadays. Right, I'm going to give this brush a clean off on a clean washcloth here. I don't like using colour switches, they're way too harsh on the bristles. And then I'm going to go in with a lighter colour. I went a bit higher with this than I was intending. But that's okay. I can still blend a lighter colour at the top. No mistakes, just happy little accidents, according to Bob Ross. I always get more fallout this side though. Because this is the eye that... Uh, this is the eye that I'm blinding. So I'm going to go into shadow 2, which is the lightest of all of the shadows in this palette. I've got one, I don't know if you can see that, I've got one loose bristle coming up. I've tried to put it out and it won't and it's annoying me. So I'm just going to see if I can grab it with a pair of tweezers. Got it! I doubt very much if you can actually see that, can you see? Where have I put it in front of the camera right now? Yep, 
you do normally get that first time you use a brush, even if it's an expensive brush. Right, so I'm just going to use this just to buff along the top edge and just lighten it out a little bit. There you go. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, so I've, I've collabed with Anya both individually and um, in a triple collab, she ironed Nona with the Bitches of Eastwick and she ironed the other Angie, Angelica Lirma, are uh, the AAA girls. And we've also been in massive collabs like the, um, the Blush Tribe Paulina palette collab that we did. Um, and I'm sure she was in the Musicians Inspired collab that we did as well and the Halloween in June or July or whenever it was. I do like this palette, these are blending out really nicely. Reds are not the easiest of colours to do, but these are actually blending together very nicely indeed. And this brush is nice and soft too. Not quite as soft as the blush tribe ones, but it is soft. I do struggle just here with dry spots as you can see. That bit of pigment there is just clinging on to a dry spot and won't let go. And that bit of pigment on my nose is really annoying me. So, a bit of my cellar water, get rid of. Otherwise that's going to fidget me all the while I'm, in, I'm editing. I'm going to pick up a bit more of that shade too. And just continue to buff this top corner until I can get that to buff out properly. That is actually my skin though, rather than the pigment causing an issue. I, I tend to get it here and here on both eyes, um, almost like an eczema, but thankfully not itchy, just just dry. But it does tend to cling on to pigments and make them quite difficult to blend out. There we go. Now, as always, I always sit back and double check to see whether the shapes are about the same both sides because obviously unless you're like Jimmy Chuck and Photoshop the results your eyes are not symmetrical sounding a bit um, like it's starting to get up out there, the wind and rain. We had a tail end of a storm last weekend and now apparently we've got Storm Dennis. Don't know who names these things. Yeah, we've got Storm Dennis on the way. Okay, I really like that. Right, I'm going to clean this brush and then I'm going to go in for a more tapered brush to deepen up through the crease. So yeah, I've I've collabed with Anya a lot of times and she's someone that I consider a, a, a good friend on YouTube and I'm proud to know her as my friend, I really am. Um, I posted when my lipsticks arrived from Colourpop um, just to show you the difference. This is the one I've been using at the moment. I'm going in for a much, much more tapered. It's almost like a pencil brush but it has just a little bit more wiggle than a pencil brush does and I'm going to go into the deepest shade this one just to deepen up through here and on the outer edge yeah so I um, I put up on Insta when my three Colourpop, Sophia, or Sophia, 
lipsticks arrived and um, said at the time I'd, I'd love to have got the whole set but I just couldn't afford it not just the cost of the lipsticks but then the fact that I would have been hit with import tax and handling fee on arrival and I could just I could do without that you know 20% import tax on top of whatever you buy is significant for those of you trying to work that out for every £10 you pay you end up paying 12 yeah so um, not good and then of course you pay uh, I mean thankfully with Colourpop it is actually only a tenner that you pay delivery but you, you know you, you still got to impact that on and then you tend to get charged believe it or not they actually charge you import tax on the delivery fee as well not just the items yeah the UK is a bit of a, a bit of a grouch like that when it comes to um, getting money off of you every which way it bloody well can I tell you and it's only going to be worse after Brexit because they're going to do the same now when we order from Europe which we didn't have before I think we've got a period of grace well, we, yeah, for the first 12, I think we've got a period of rice for the first 12 months. Scared to order anything and find out, to be honest. This shade is not as deep as I was hoping it was going to be. I was hoping it was going to be a lot deeper than this, but I can build it up a little bit. I mean, you can, I mean, you can absolutely see the difference in the two eyes, where I've got the definition on this eye now with the deeper shade. But I was hoping it would be closer to, you know, how dark it looks in pan. But anyway, get this built. Yeah, so I'd, I'd put up about, um, I haven't got my three. And then Anya messaged me, because we talk every day, on either Insta or Facebook, or, you know. Um, and she said that she's actually got the complete set, and did I fancy doing a collab? And I'm like, hell yes, of course I do, what have you got in mind? Um... And she said that she'd seen, she couldn't remember who she'd seen it by, but she'd seen um, other people had done things like lipstick tubes for my makeup. And she said, How do you feel about that? I'm like, well, That sounds good to me. I said, So, what are we talking about? The, the colour of the lipstick tubes? And she went, Well, you're just inspired by the lipstick, so whatever the lipstick inspires you to do. So. That's why my first two were maybe not what you were expecting. Which is why I thought, having gone a little bit around the houses with the previous two, I might do something a little, a little more expected this time. Okay, I'm just going to tidy this up with some micellar water on a pad because it's looking a bit scruffy and I'm losing I'm losing the vision of how I want it to finish up looking so I'm just gonna that is a tip for you if you're doing your makeup and it starts to look a bit bleh you don't have to wait for the end to tidy it up with some micellar water on a pad you can do that any stage you want just to get your your clear view back of you know what you're hoping to achieve with the look there we go let's neaten those edges up a bit I can see what I'm looking at now yeah, I think I'm about even 
Now this side you can see I've got super super deep creasing here and even doing the circular movements hasn't helped so what I do have to do when I'm putting the shimmer on is I have to actually stretch my lid out. Now the skin on your eyelids is as delicate as tissue paper. Um, unfortunately I found through experience I have to do this with mine. Just this side though, not this one. Um, because otherwise what happens is the pigment packs loosely into the, the super deep creasing that I've got there. Um, rather than being blended on and then as it dries up through the day it ends up flaking down my eye, down my face, which A is uncomfortable, and B, ruins your makeup look. Right, I'm going to use my Slayle Dane Jasmine to wet the brush after I've applied the pigment. Um, I normally use a cheaper spray to spray the pigment with, but um, the jasmine one I found just along my jawline here dries my skin out. It's the only um, flavour or scent that does it. So um, I just reserve this one for wetting my brush. And I've actually got a an eyeliner brush because I want to be able to get right into this corner. So I'm just going to coat both sides of this brush with shade number four. I'm going to liberally coat both sides because obviously it's quite a small brush. Then I'm going to spray each side and then dry off this ferrule here. Easiest way to do that is just stick it in the crook of your, ne your knuckle and spin it because the last thing you want is moisture coming down here, loosening the glue, holding the bristles on your brush. Right. Because I can't close this eye, because I'm blind in that one, so I won't know what the hell's going on, I'm going to look down into a little mirror here so that you can still see what's going on there. Now, you could if you wanted... <laughs> you could if you wanted do a cut crease here. I don't like doing that the first time that I use... A palette that's new to me because I want to see just how much opacity the um, shimmers actually have and this is the deeper of the two shimmers because I want quite a quite a dark smoky look today so you can get right into the corner with these little brushes which is absolutely bloody brilliant and then just obviously fill in the remainder of the lid now I'm just going to dry this off on the washcloth pick up a bit more now this shadow does look like it's going hard pan in the palette but going over the area that's hard pan it's still letting me pick up pigment so it looks like it's um, quite an oil based shadow uh, so you wouldn't necessarily need to wet it I prefer to wet it because obviously where my lids move around, I'm you know I'm 45 years old, I've lost 14 stone which is just under 200 pounds. Um, so the skin on my eyelids moves. So I prefer to wet the shimmer just to help minimise the fallout. Now obviously there's some fallout there. You know it's it happens. I really like this shimmer. Oh wow. And I'm just going to use the very tips of the bristles 
just to kind of buff it into the the deeper matte shade on the edge there and you can see that's got the opacity to completely cover the shade, the shadow that was on the actual lid itself so I'm really quite pleased with that if I show you what I mean about the hard pan look you can see it's it's definitely gone hard pan in there but it is still letting me pick up pigment onto the brush um, so just be careful when you are picking up pigment on the brush because obviously it is going to come up and coat the bristles quite thickly so you can end up with quite a bit of fallout if you're not careful um, so you may find you have to go in two or three times with a smaller brush like this alright so you can see I'm only really stretching it as far as I need to I'm not pulling it right out to my other ear and the minute I'm happy that I've got the area covered I'm letting go dry that off on the washcloth and pick up some more pigment um, it's unfortunate that I have to do that my eye got pulled around when I was five years old. So yes, we're talking about 40 years ago and that's the damage that it's caused. So um, don't mess about with your skin on your eyes, folks. I hate seeing these bigger channels pull their eye right out when they're doing an eyeliner or something. It just makes me shudder with you know the damage they're doing to the, the lids so you can see that for the second half of the lid this lid does move around a lot more than this one did but again I'm only you I only put it out just to do the inner corner there where I have the super super deep creasing that is such a pretty look right I am going to continue cleaning this brush off and I will pause you while I go and do foundation and other base products etc and I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now, sadly, I have to wait until the next time I press record until I can chat to you again. But for you, my darlings, it's going to be absolutely instant. So I will see you right now. Hey, I'm back. I'm going to give this a go. This is that Revolution Soap Brow thing. See what it's like. If I can get into the bloody thing. I hate the way they do that. They make it so difficult to get into the bloody boxes. Especially if you've got nails like I have. Right. So. I'm going to go into it dry. It says you can use it dry or wet. And I'm going to go into it dry. So I've packed soap onto the brush and I'm just gonna Ooh. okay Ooh. fluffy what do we think do we like do we not like I can't decide whether I like that or not My worry, of course, is if you go out in the rain. See, I can remember in the 80s using soap to spike your hair up with. When you go out in the rain and it all starts lathering up and 
and the spikes disappear so I do have to wonder how this would fare in a downpour but I do quite like the fluffy brown look it gives me A wipe on the flannel or washcloth. Hmm. Hmm. I shall have to think about this and decide whether I like it or not. I'm still contemplating. Anyway, while I'm contemplating, let's stick some a brow pencil on. Going in with one of these define and fill in dark brown, the um, the super fine brow pencil from Revolution. Got a spoolie on the other end, but obviously having done this to my brows, I'm guessing I don't need to use the spoolie. Hmm. And while I'm doing this bit, I'll talk to you a little bit more about Anya. I really can't wait. See, when I'm recording this, I've seen the first film of our three-part collab. So I know which lippy she started with. But I haven't seen the other ones yet. So I've got no idea which one she did as her second and which one is her final shade because what we're doing is I'm going to use the three shades that I've got and she's going to use the other three shades because she's got the entire set so Okay, I quite like these brows I think, I quite like the fluffy look, it reminds me of my brows in the 80s before I started to pluck them away to nothingness. Oh. Right, I'm going to go back in with this slanted brush and I'm going into shadow 6 which is the deepest. Pat it off on the washcloth because I don't want fallout now I've got my base done. Because you know I'm all about that base, about that base, no fallout. Many apologies to Megan Trainer at this point. Yes, I'm squinting this side. I always do. I have no peripheral vision so the viewfinder is quite a long way off when I've not got my contact lens in and uh, kind of relying on muscle memory. And a pretty hazy picture to not actually poke myself in the eye. Regular viewers will attest to how many times I do poke myself in the eye. And then I'm going to grab this which is actually a concealery type brush. And I'm going to use this to buff the lower lash line out. And I think I'll go in with this one here, the lightest pink that I used before at the top of my shadow here just very gently 
buff along that lower lash line just to soften the line up a little bit and tie the top and bottom look together If I remember, I will leave the link for these brushes if you are interested. As I said, they're not as soft as the Blush Tribe ones, but they are very soft and they're, they're nice and light handle-wise as well. So they're not making my hands ache too much from holding it and doing the blending. Hmm. Like that like that a lot. Now, this is a cheap lip brush that I got from eBay many, 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 many years ago. That's highlighter falling down. Go back to where you're meant to be down. This is my Lethal Cosmetics Scatter Highlighter which is the, the sort of white with the lavender blue shift which I think is going to go really nicely with these berry look that I've done pop that on the inner corner, blend it down And the same thing this side. I like to bring mine down under the eye. I think it just finishes the look off nicely. Yes, I wonder which um I mean, by the time you're watching this, I will know which lipstick she'll be using for her third one because I'll have watched the first and the second and by process of elimination, I can work out the third. But it'll be interesting if, because I know she's got the bright red, hasn't she, called Fred. So it'd be interesting if we both have um, a berry toned look today that could be quite fun right I'm going to pause you one last time I'm going to lob some more of this highlight over my face put some mascara on pop the lippy on do something with my wet hair and I'll be back with my finished look Hello, I am back obviously I stuck the uh, lethal highlight on mascara was the blowout cannabis sativa one from Revolution. Lippy, well, we know it's very mean lipsticks, and I just feel that it's appropriate. Now, this particular hat I have been lusting after for about 13 years, and my mate kept saying to me, When I get rid of it, Ange, it's yours. After 13 years, the hat is mine. He has relinquished it to my ownership. And I just think it goes perfectly with today's look. Top hanging off my shoulder as usual. There we go. So, this my darlings is my final look. Inspired by very mean lipsticks. So, if you are not a regular 4F Babies, please double check you are still subscribed because YouTube are still deleting you left, right and centre whether you want to be deleted or not. Once you've done that and you've done all those good YouTuber things of liking and commenting and maybe even sharing this film. I'm going to need you to go over to Anya's channel for me and check out her final film in this uh, trifecta of lipstick collaborations. 
Right. When you go over to her, let her know you're from 4F Beauty. Hit the subscribe button, turn it from red to grey. Because if you're not subscribed to Annie, you are really missing out. However, if you are here from Anya's channel, hi, hello, welcome. Hope you enjoyed it here. If you've made it this far through, I guess there must have been something that intrigued you. Even if it was just the hat that you didn't know was coming. Hmm. It would be awesome if you too would like to join the Fora family by hitting subscribe, but I totally get if you want to watch a few more films first to see whether or not I'm your cup of coffee, because I'm, despite being British, I'm a coffee girl, not a tea girl. That being said, grab yourself a drink, put your feet up, pick a playlist and indulge in some of my previous films. Just in case you're not sure. Or if you're having a bit of a lazy day and you need to chill out, what better reason to sit back and watch a few of my films. Right, my darlings, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.